Hey guys, bear with me here. I just finished watching the 2007 independent horror film, The Girl Next Door. It is by far one of the most fucked up things I've ever seen. Uh, and <clears throat> in case I accidentally smile in this review, I don't think any of this is funny. Uh, I didn't laugh or smile one single time in the hour half runtime of this movie, but maybe I won't, but if I do, it's just know that it's a nervous smile, okay? I don't actually think any of this is funny. Uh, it's just I, when I'm anxious or uncomfortable, I tend to smile at bad times. I think that's a pretty common thing, so I just wanted to give that for face. This movie is fucked up, okay? It's not bad though, okay? This is not going to be like Cuties, okay? I did watch Cuties before this, and uh, Cuties got an instant 1 out of 10 basically before the movie even started. I tried to give it a chance, but it was just dead on arrival. Um, but this is, it's not the case here. This is not dead on arrival. I had no idea what I was getting into when I turned this on. The only reason I watched it is because it was in my recommended on Netflix as like an 80% match for me, which I'm now really concerned about. Why is this a match for me? Because this is, this is sadism on another level. Uh, this is like not campy or cartoony or funny in the slightest, okay? This reminded me a little bit of a movie, um, I don't know if it's called House of Pain or House of Horrors or something like that, where they do a little bit of a similar thing here, but they kind of play it off for laughs sometimes and they like play inappropriate music to keep the tone light. Not the case here. This is dead serious, grounded in reality. In fact, it's even based on a true story to make matters worse. So yeah, this is honestly like 11 out of 10 um, in terms of the extremity uh, scale. Uh, this makes things like uh, the human centipede and two girls one cup look like child's play, in my opinion at least. Um, just because the subject matter is so extreme and it was executed well. And it did not go into offensive territory. I was trying to ask myself, why am I not offended by this? I think the reason for that is because it's executed well and it's not glorified. I saw some reviews for this movie, just I briefly glanced before I made this. Um, most people are hating on this film because they think it's like a glorification of torture porn on minors or something. Now, I did not get that from this at all. Cuties was accidentally glorifying it because it would zoom in on the kids' butts and their chests and it would make all these awkward camera angles and it was just gross, right? Not the case here. Um, it's not glorifying anything really. It's simply a harsh truth reality film that's based on a true story. And the camera angles are not bad, okay? There's uh, only one single nude scene really in the entire film. And there's, even when it is nude, it's not like sexualized, it's like horrifying. You're not gonna be like, you know? It's just, there's no, while the movie itself is pure evil, I don't feel like the production of this movie is evil in the same way that Cuties was. Well, even though, even Cuties, I don't think the director was like trying to be evil, but like it just came off that way. This, I don't think it was trying to be evil and it doesn't come off as evil as far as production and background goes. So I just want to give that, I personally give this movie a pass. I think it's executed well enough and uh, it was just a really, really fascinating horror movie. It's one of a kind as well. This is a movie that will evoke emotions from you that will not be evoked through any other means or media whatsoever. If you're like me and you've become desensitized to a lot of horror stuff and media, then I would recommend this one for you. If you're sensitive or you're, you know I mean, this movie will, can cause you to throw up pretty easily. So if you're not, if you don't have the stomach for it, then obviously skip it. But like I said, it's not glorifying it. It's not trying to be purposely disgusting or anything. It's just simply harsh, cold truth of this taboo story. And what I mean by that is like, it's not filmed, like we're not, so for example, like the, the girl obviously receives a ton of abuse and torture in this. So for example, if like Ruth is um, putting the cigarette on her skin and she's screaming in pain, it's not making a joke of it or glorifying it. It's not like, showing some naked girl like screaming for her life or something like that, it's usually panned away and like you're looking at the reactions of the people who are in the room. So it's like 
we get to see, you know, there are some characters who are specifically good people and specifically bad people. And every single time there's like a torture scene, it's not, again, not glorifying torture. It's showing us the reactions of everyone else in the room. So it's uh, not that bad to look at, okay? It's, it's not, a, it's not an atrocious movie to look at. It's just to hear and experience and emotionally, that's where the turmoil comes in. But it's still good. It's not, it's not a bad movie, but um, yeah, um, The Girl Next Door. So this is about, so there is going to be spoilers, and just remember that this is extremely taboo subject matter. So we are following a young boy, don't know his age. They all look like they're eight years old, like eight to ten in this. So we're following like some ten-year-old boy named David who meets a girl who's also supposed to be in that age range, but she's played by a 21-year-old, thank God. I know in my, some of my other movie reviews, I've always said I hate it when adults play kids in movies. Well, this is... <laughs> I would not say that about this one. Thank you. I'm very, very glad they chose a 21-year-old. That's what I meant about the smiling, yeah. I don't think it's funny, it's just me being uncomfortable now. Um, thank you for picking a 21-year-old to play this, because... I just, it would obviously be illegal, right? Yeah, probably, I assume it would be illegal to have a, a minor in that role. But, um, but the reason I say that is because it's kind of hard to take her as a minor, um, just because she looks so clearly like an adult. Uh, she's way taller than everyone else, but you're supposed to believe that she's the same age as them. Um, so for the, for the point of this review, I will keep referring to her as like a child, even though she doesn't look like one at all. So the story is about a, 16 year old because it was 16 years old in 16 years old in real life that's the real life girl who was beaten to death uh, it's a different name but it is the same story if you're wondering so a 16 year old girl uh, her parents die in a car crash and she is taken into the custody and care well, care no the custody and prison imprisonment of her aunt Ruth who has a particularly poor worldview this is the 1950s uh, the movie has a slight, I don't know, theme of gender roles in 50s, uh, I don't know what to call it. But um, this is, uh, so she, she basically hates women. I don't know if a woman can be identified as a misogynist, right? But if you can, then this woman is obviously a misogynist. She absolutely loathes and despises her own gender. And... Uh, she, there's not really any rhyme or reason to her actions. She just simply wants to, she's just a sadistic individual who wants to torture uh, this 16 year old. So she locks the 16 year old in the basement, uh, then instructs her children who are like eight to 10 years old. One of them like, looks like they're like seven as well. Uh, they all have their own varying kind of little personality quirks, which is all the more terrifying uh, because these child characters are actual, the only one like the, only the girl who's being tortured and gets raped is the one that's portrayed by a 21 year old. The rest of them are actual children. So there are actual children in these actual fucked up uh, scenarios and scenes, which is probably the most morally questionable thing in this is make, is writing that dialogue for them and making them act in these scenes because it's, it's really fucked up. Um, but I won't hold against the movie too much because it, 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 it was a one of a kind experience. I don't know. Hopefully it didn't scar any of these people. It will scar the viewer though. This is a movie you will not be able to wipe clean from your memory. It's going to be permanently on your memory. So here's where I'm really beating around the bush because I almost don't want to say it out loud. I don't want to put it into words, but here's what happens. So Ruth locks, um, I, why am I forgetting her name now? Um, she locks a 16 year old in the uh, basement and um, Meg, Meg is her name. Um, and she instructs her seven to 11 year old children to uh, basically strip her, rape her, torture her, uh, just beat and abuse on her. And it's a really weird dynamic because you as a viewer can't really hold any of the children too accountable. I felt there were like two of the children I would personally hold accountable in this one which is her direct son, like the actual one that commits the rape, only one person's a rapist in this. So that one, that guy's particularly deranged and fucked up. Despite his age, I'll, I'm happy to say that. Um, well, not happy, but like, you know what I mean. Um, and also the older brother of David, possibly, 
he was also on another level of sadism. He had zero interest in sexuality or anything like that. He just simply wanted to burn and cut her. So it gets really, really fucked up. Um, the rest of them, like they're, the other two younger children, I, I probably wouldn't hold too accountable just because they're basically being groomed by a female pedophile. Yes, there is one line of dialogue that basically alludes to the fact that she's a female pedophile. Eventually Susie tells David that she used to touch her, plus paired with the fact that uh, she's constantly spanking that 10 year old girl's ass all the time throughout this movie. So it is the only movie I've watched that features a female pedophile as a villain, and is the only movie I've watched that features actual real children and like this kind of scenes. I mean these kind of scenes would be hard to stomach with adults. It would be easier, but it would still be hard. Uh, so the fact that it's actual children just really drives home. So overall, I, I don't want to call myself a defender, I just want to say the movie was decent, okay? As far as entertainment goes, yes, I was entertained. I was glued to the screen. I have not been this glued to the screen in a long time. Like, I needed a satisfying ending. And I didn't, I kind of got that, but it's just, again, it's a harsh reality film, so it's not exactly Happily Ever After. Um, as far as, so we've, let's just talk, yeah, it is an effective horror film that proves that you don't need guns and blood and murder. I mean, yeah, there is the occasional blood, but like, you don't need blood, guns, and murders, and chopped off heads to scare people and jump scares. You can simply have a suburban 50s neighborhood um, with a really deranged sadism aunt. And it sounds silly on paper, but it's not funny or silly at all. That's the scary part about it. So, yeah, it was an effective horror film. That's really all I have to say. The acting initially was really weak, but once the plot actually kicks in and we start to learn what happens, it completely shifts gears, and these kids are basically talking like adults, and like, it's scary how much, it's not mature, but like, it's scary how they're capable of doing and saying these things. Like, even, I can't picture real life children being able to say these things. Obviously, real life children I don't think would do these things, but how can they even say those words they're saying out loud? Like, a lot of the dialogues written for them is clearly for adults, so pretty weird. Um, the, f the only criticisms that I have for the movie, as I said, I don't think it's glorifying. I don't think it's, um, I mean, it is, it's evil, but it's not, like, evil. It's, it's just telling the story of a real-life event, as harsh as it is, so. Uh, but as far as real criticisms go, I thought, I mean, it's, it's hard, but, uh, I thought maybe some of the characters were making kind of illogical or poor decisions. So obviously Ruth, I don't know what Ruth's long-term plan was. It's not like you can keep, uh, it's not like you can keep Meg in your basement forever. Eventually someone's going to wonder something. What are you going to do, kill her? Because you're, you're the, you know, you're the guardian. You're, you're going to go down for this at some point. Um, so I don't know what her plan was or anything like that. She's really just a horrible person. One of the, maybe, actually, yeah, the single worst, uh, person of any movie I've ever watched is Ruth. Ruth is literally unwatchable. Um, and it's not one of those villains you hate so much you love. It's like, Jesus Christ, can you please just die already, you know? I wanted David to kill her like more than 20 times in this movie. Um, David, I was considering criticizing some of his actions. He's very wishy-washy, uh, pretty terrible at telling his parents what's going on, not very good at uh, explaining to the police what's going on. But like, he does kind of get the child pass, right, and the fact that he's being groomed and he's in this weird-ass dynamic. It's so weird that he, like, hangs out at their house and stuff. I don't know what was going on. Um, but so I won't really hold David too accountable. And um, I felt like I had one more person. Oh, yeah, the cop. The cop did it. It was horrible at his job, okay? When you get a report like that, uh, that a bunch of kids have been beating Meg, you know, the, the mom's excuse, or the aunt's excuse is, uh, the, t the girls are out shopping, so you can't see them right now. I mean, is, how is that good enough? When you get a serious police report like that, how is that good enough? I don't, I don't understand. So some of the people were just acting stupid. Um, and uh, one more thing I want to say is, again, I don't think it glorified it, but, but I have to admit there was no point to this. This movie does not have a point or a message or anything. It's simply shock horror for the sake of shock horror. So we're going to give this movie a 6 out of 10. I do not recommend this to my worst enemy because it is the most shocking, vile thing you'll ever see. And it will... 
I, I can tell this is going to be in my brain for weeks to come. I really hope I'm able to forget about this one. Um, so it is the opposite of disposable. It was executed well. So it does get an above average score. Um, I'm just thinking, would I watch this again? Maybe. The only reason I'm thinking about watching it again, I, I low-key kind of want to, is because the adult scene. So when we see adult David, since I had no prior knowledge of what this was going to be when I went into it, I didn't really know what to take of the whole uh, prequel intro section with the adult David. But now that I've experienced this movie, I'm like, okay, there's probably a lot more powerful stuff in that intro if I go back and watch it again. Maybe I'll just watch the intro, because I don't really need to subject myself to the rest of it. So yeah, The Girl Next Door, 6 out of 10. Definitely stay away from this one, unless you want to be scarred for life.